Why, hello there, fellow prison wardens. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld, the first one to go. Episode 254. Two for two. Nemelius is up. Well, Nem, uh, you are not going to be allowed clothing. Or drugs. Because you are destined for the prisons. So I'm just going to have you stand in the prison waiting for a warden to slap irons on you. Dragon Dill will do the, the honors. You are, what is it? Was it a sixth of flaws with super immunity? And you're male. So I'm going to need to farm sperm off you. Do I have room for, yeah, I do have room for sperm. When the first 11 is inbred, do you hear banjos? No, but you might hear, uh, you might hear the sharpening of uh, kitchen knives out of frustration. The thing is, once you're an 11, like, all of the good genes are passed on guaranteed with whatever you're, you're, you know. So, it sounds bad, but it's, it's, it's still very useful to have, have a flawed 11. Alright. Farm. Hemogen and sperm. We're gonna, we're gonna double farm you. And then we're going to put in a joy wire. I have two slots left for beds. I mean, I could add more beds and just cramp, make them even more cramped. That's always a possibility. Flood eight. It's okay. Worth keeping. I do have an empty spot now that opinion got kicked out. Uh, Pena Pena and Shahoru are 15, so I won't pull on them just yet. Uh, maybe a flawless nine? So zero jacking Chan. You know, I might do shield jacking Chan with the super immunity. Or opinion jacking Chan. Yeah, I'll grow this one. It's a flawed nine, but it has super immunity, which in a way is more important. And that's going to be stuck into the pod next. We are about to have a Steph Cthulhu birth in 0.3 days. This is a chance for... Uh, for another raffle. Flicker. You became a child. You're allowed to remain a colonist. Supreme. You also became a child and you are going to be enslaved. Lillin. Feel like you're allowed to be, yeah, you're allowed to be a colonist. Wow, those two are like twins. Look the same. Uh, and bone up. Enslaved. Big batch babies. What is the timer on colonist eggs? Oh, you know what? We could do an, a colonist egg harvest, I think. It's been a while. I feel like as soon as I anesthetize half the colony, uh, there'll be like some sort of mega raid. And because Wendy's sleeping, I'll have to, it'll, it'll be rough. That's everybody. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to take on...
tertiary goals at this point. So the viewer submitted ideas uh, suggestion box is open. My primary goal is, of course, the first one to go. Secondary goal will be Trout as a vampire slave. And then a tertiary goal will be of your choosing. Hey, Tumblin. How's it going today? How is playing Deliver Us the Moon? Well, I hope. Thank you for the raid. Cheers, dude. It's a big rim world base. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty big. It's it's a honker. You wouldn't particularly recommend. I've checked out the game, but yeah, I never really uh, I never dug into it. So thank you for the warning. So right now, uh, there's a suggestion box that is open for viewer submitted ideas for goals. If you know what's going on and you want to propose a goal. Hey, Thomas Rouse. Hey, congrats for your uh, your idea of becoming the next scenario. Replacing this once this ends. I hope you don't get bit by zombies. <laughs> Look at all the eggs coming in. Okay, sick bat vat birth. So the Steph Cthulhu has major infant illness. I'm going to tend with uh, glitter world meds as uh, as that's honestly the fastest way to recover and then wake low up. Actually, Bryce, it's in a better mood uh, to start doing the tending. Another thing that would help you is to get the baby's inner germ as well. Let's go run the tending now. Hundred thirty percent tended. That should be helpful. Going back to regular medicine for the implantation. Uh, I will run a raffle on this, but I don't know. There's no guarantees that this child survives. It's granted, it's not grave, so it could be worse. This is major, but not grave. Grave illness is just the brutal one that's very hard to recover from without like miracle. Wow, you've already gained two int since you became on your feet. That's pretty quick. Mark as a child. You can remain a colonist. I always have such great ideas to do with RimWorld. Well, to be completely fair, um, the next series is not my idea. It was community suggested and voted on, and I'm just executing the idea. Some of them are my own, but not all of them. And a lot of them are, are influenced in some way or another. Uh, like, yeah, almost every, every series, pretty much every series I run has some sort of viewer-driven component to it. So, the baby's at 40%. 
So it's going to be important to track that over time, whether it's climbing or not. I do have um, heal serums. I have three of them. Uh, worst case scenario, we could always heal serum before it becomes fatal. But I'd preferably not to use heal serum if it could help it. So, Eevee got scanned. And I have no idea what we scanned. Because I always miss those messages. Awful art. Uh, well, I already have awful art. Where did the gene even go? Are my banks so full that the gene got put to the... Yeah, the banks are full, so the gene just, like, automatically went over here. Which is where I would have wanted it. Yep, there it is. Wow. That is so full. Um, but that that's a good reminder that I need additional uh, banks. The problem with that is the assemblers aren't necessarily within range. So I think I'm going to destroy the rip scanner here and move the rip scanner somewhere else to free up three more bank space. I'll put the rip scanner... Hmm... Here, I guess. So I think all of the colonus eggs, because I don't have any queued up needing medical attention, um, all the colonus eggs got harvested. So this is what we've got. So go through these eggs. And while I do that, I'm going to have you guys uh, pull for the tertiary goal. We have uh, improved kill box, expand freezer, or meat, trade runs, um, Raven Moonstar, I'm going to leave that one out, yours. We've got um, organized inventory, uh, add... So, um, Mark, your build a shelf in the prison and fill it with smoke leaf, uh, prisoners don't consume drugs. So, there's no point in doing that. And then... Build the floors of silk. There you go. Yeah, the... If you look at the prisoners' um, needs, they, um, they don't have, like, recreation needs. You know, they have outdoor needs, which are, like, pretty much unfulfillable for prisoners. Uh... But yeah, they won't necessarily, they won't, they don't interact with, like, shelves in the same way. Oh, I'm getting the first brown out. To the eastern half of the grid, where the death rest facility is. So, I have already designed the base to accommodate for this. I'm going to flick the right switch on, and the east is now supplemented with extra power. I think it's because I have zero, basically zero wind, and and it's nighttime. It's about to be daytime, so it's not going to be a problem for very long. Nemelius, do you want to trade up or keep what you currently have? You're currently a prisoner, but you can become the sick baby if you want. Where is the baby? Oh, there it is. And it's recovering. It went from 40% to 39 so it's in, going in the right direction. You want to trade up? Got it. I'll re-roll the other one. Glitch! I'm guessing you probably want to pass, but I'll wait for your official say-so. Don't want to make assumptions. Alright, pass. We roll it. Raven Moonstar. Okay. 
You are now a genetic donor. An unwilling and imprisoned genetic donor. Where are you anyway? There you are. So let's go and start breeding. Dom cross with Jacking Chan. Organizing inventory. Got it. It's Leb cross with Jacking Chan as well. Trala. With also Jacking Chan. Man, he is busy dude. Pain? I think that's also Jacking Chan. I I yep. Yes it is. Six trash. Nine keep. Nine with uh super immunity. Eight keep. Six trashed. Jacking Chan, don't even walk away. I mean let, let's be let's be honest. You're you're gonna Oh, Raven Moonstar and Maxu. Okay, we well, were skipping that one. Did not see that coming. Rogi. Cross with Jack and Chan. I think maybe next colonist cycle I'll have Jack and Chan um, not be contributing to the gene pool just for diversity's sake. Death. Can you go to the bathroom now? Nope. Ten with super immunity. Nice. Zero and Zach, Jack and Chan, or Madzy. I'll do Madzy. Frosty. And Jack and Chan. No bathroom break. You know how, like, the Matrix was about trying to use humans as batteries? <laughs> well. Here in Wendyville, we use humans as genetic donors with no breaks. And last but not least, Scorpio. Derp to der. Or Cthulhu. Uh, let's go with Cthulhu. There's no, uh, there's no incest risk. All right, bathroom break is allowed now. Oh, good. Cthulhu is vomiting onto the ova. Or ovum. Yeah. Good stuff. Now you know why the uh, children come out looking staggeringly ugly. They're, uh, they're one part vomit. <laughs> oh, God. Pretty much all 7 plus in this lot. Nope, there's more coming in. Sappo and Whaler. Let's see. Sappo. Whammy? I'll do Whammy. And Whaler with Madsy. with a vla. I mean, you know, it's acceptable. Alright, where is Mazzy? Big old panda, panda bear. Get over there. Contribute. Alright, we have another Hussar attempt to scan. That was Perkins. Hope your first name is an N. So, Prediction. No, uh, the last one, did I get jeans I wanted? I did not. Right? Because I scanned. Yeah. So, let's try it again. Will I get jeans I want? Yes or no? I'll give you two minutes to predict. So that's Perkins. I only want red eyes. 
So I will just preemptively say it's a tiny chance they get red eyes. It's like an 18th. One eighteen chance. What's that? 5.2% or something? 5.5%. And then pretty soon... The, Zunimu, uh, the germination comas are going to be um, done for the gene splitting, so we'll we'll get a going on that. Yeah. I really need to move these eggs and organize them. So, hey, Madzi, you're in the right place at the wrong time. You're going to be my little egg organizer now. Because uh, Wendy is sleeping. Um, almost two thirds done with death rest, which is pretty good progress. All right, starting from here, this is a flawless eight. I feel like I'm going to need more room real quick because the quality of these. Oh, well, that one can be destroyed. The quality of these eggs are becoming better and better by the minute. A flawed 10. So the Madzi Raven Moonstar is a flawed 10 with super immunity. That's uh, that's pretty good right there. What is it missing? Fur skin, super immunity, mini horn. So it has all the really rare and important ones. Flawed 8. A six we can destroy. A flawless eight. And a flawed eight. We have so many eggs. We might need to start phasing out sevens entirely. As we have less and less use for them. So this here is one of the two treasures of the batch. It's a flawless ten. I think there was another ten or a nine. Last but at least a nine. The genetic bell curve is real. It's really just like the... I was trying to explain in YouTube comments, but essentially when both parents um, have the same genes, it guarantees that it's passed down to their offspring. So the more, the more successful I become, the faster and more improved things become. 
So it's very easy, it's very hard to get started and, and easier to finish, provided, however, that you um, continually account for genetic diversity. Because if you don't, then you can end up totally getting a whole bunch of like 11s, but they all are inbred, you know, and, and that would not be so good. But I've been fairly careful to avoid that. Nemi, you want to see your jeans? Uh, sure. If I knew where you were. You're being fed over here. So you're missing... You're missing robust stomach and... What else are you missing? Gold tolerance, reduced pain, strong melee damage. Many horns. Apparently I can't even tell. <laughs> You'd think I'd have it memorized by now. Uh, fast wound healing. How many of the new generation are not related to Jacking Chan? Uh, let's check. So Kadath Jacking Chan that's related. Maxu Riven Moonstar is one of, is a flawed 10. So that's probably going to be the next in the pod for genetic diversity's sake. But all the nines are related to Chan. There's a whole lot of eights that are not though. So I would probably pick a, the, t the flawed 10 that's not related and then some flawless eights that are not related. Like Scorpio Cthulhu is obviously not related. Um, Fantasy, Madzy, but Jackie Chan is is represents a, a fairly high percentage of the uh, of the embryo that we've got here. This is all Jackie Chan is about sixty percent of all embryos that we currently have. All right, fantasy, uh, let's go. So here on out, uh, what I'm gonna attempt to do is is breed for diversity, which isn't always gonna look like that's what I'm doing because like there's really no one to, to crossbreed with the wasters better than Jacking Chan. I might be done with sevens, though. Uh, where are your parents, Mark? Your parents is Jack and Shannon Payne. I wonder how many corpses we got now. 537. Nate Silver would almost be proud of me. Very strange comment. Aren't Scorpio and Jack Chan related? I mean, at this point, everybody's related. It's more about how closely related they are. So Scorpio is related to Madzy and Zero. Not Jack and Chan at all, maybe. Oh, no, brothers. Yeah, they're brothers. The chance for, like, first or second cousins to be inbred it is sufficiently low. That it doesn't pose a a risk necessarily to like two generations down the line. 
In fact, in real life, I think the chance... In real life, like, the real dangers of, um... Of inbreeding really... I mean, it's all luck, right? I mean, the, the idea is essentially, like, if you have a, a bad recessive trait in your gene pool and you marry within your gene pool, that recessive trait becomes expressed. You know, genetic diversity helps to avoid recessive negative traits, in other words. But, um... But for tens of thousands or millions of years, humans have been... Dead doing incest not mostly because they didn't have an understanding of genes right like like it was not too long ago that that became taboo for the most part so the real risk to humans is uh is very 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 low in in reality The game doesn't really calculate it quite that same way, but but uh, that's why I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to have incest be zero, just low enough that the the risks are acceptable. Oh, those are the wrong color. Interesting. I'm just dragging to try to find anything that has been overlooked. Color-wise. Before I start on the floors. Well, it looks like we're having another little bit of um, a brownout on the west. Switch these around. There we go. The west battery bank got really low. Kind of explains the human race when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, just like 150 years ago, humans didn't travel. You, for the most part, most people grew up and died within like 50 miles. Yeah, like there wasn't a lot of mobility, except for like big pushes for for manifest destiny and and pioneership the you know something i'm gonna make up a number but it was like something like 99 percent of humans followed probably that that rule of like they grew up and died more or less in the same neighborhood there, there wasn't a lot of of travel involved for the most part uh for the average human which means that your gene pool was essentially who was in your town and and that was the extent of the gene pool so you know, you weren't marrying siblings, but you weren't really spreading the genes out all that much either. And, uh, and it's only in the, like, the last, uh, you know, 150 years or so that, like, it really became frowned upon to, uh, to, uh, incest and things, you know. Like, siblings were always off, uh, not to be considered, but, uh but cousins and the like were kind of fair game. In fact, it was very normal, like royal families and the like, for for cousins to be married, to keep uh, royal titles intact. You know, CK3 style, right? We joke about it, but like, there's a reason that it was done that way. <laughs> Can't have a surpers when your cousin uncle brother is your cousin uncle brother. And, <laughs> you know... Your your sister niece aunt is your sister niece aunt. No one to assert. You're all just a little too related. All right, how is baby doing, baby? Bad infant illness, but it is minor. So you are recovering. As long as it doesn't become a grave, you will recover in due time. So I think... There's a few, like, random things, mostly destroyed walls and the like, that, uh, that need to be repainted. But for the most part, we are all burgundy. 
So a little bit more Tinctoria harvest, and we will be we'll, we will have burgundized. Oh, well, there's the corpse freezer. I failed to realize that. So yeah, we need a little bit more burgundy, and then we can start with the floors. So in terms of organization, because I know you guys voted for organization, um, I think one of the things I probably need to do is go on a trade run. So the benefit of the trade run is there is a chance for me to get um, single phase jeans or jeans that I want. A tiny chance, probably a pretty zero chance for single phase jeans, but um, but still non-zero, truly. Um, so, Bryzit, are you good? Yeah, you're good to Farskit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Bryzit. Given the time of year, it's like simply too cold to do very much. So I think what I'll have Bryzit do is maybe trade to like these three towns, looking for, or maybe these four towns, and see if the horse can survive it. It's possible that the horse is just like, nope, too cold, and it dies. And if it dies, it dies. So that's that's what I'm going to do. Tiny little trade run. And I'm going to send uh, minimal stuff on this trade run. And, uh, and then if there's stuff worth buying, I'll send more supplies. So... Some lavish meals. What were we even feeding the horse? Just like rice? Lavish meals, rice. And... Tech prof. Because I don't need it. I need these items that are like one-offs. I ought to get rid of. Just to free up shelf space. I have a lot of weapons, but they don't sell for very well. Gear is very heavy, which is why I don't like sell. I, I, I'd rather have traders come to me for gear. So I'll send them with 5,000 silver. Because if I load it up in the pod and they don't want to buy it, then I'm kind of stuck with it for a long time. So if you're wondering about horses, the game clocks them at negative 35 Celsius. Uh, right now it's negative 45 at my home tile. And I'm sending them more north. Maybe I'll go south. Maybe I'll go to this cluster here. I'll, I'll take a quick look at the temperature. So this generally stays above negative 30 Celsius. And this goes to negative 39. So yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll send them to this cluster down that way. Just to make sure that the, the animal stays alive. Oh, um, having Goose go berserk reminds me I need to start scanning these guys. So, Yoloioi, or whatever your stupid name is, you're going in first. Oh! I guess Goose is not getting scanned. We got our Goose. Scorpio smashed her head off in one swing. Like you do, like you do. Did I get my red eyes? I, uh, I never noticed. Let's check. Awful sir, social. So, no, I did not. For Yaloyoyoy, whatever your name is, uh, we want... I'm not going to run predictions on this because it's kind of hard to calculate even the chances. You wish there was a mech you could uh, operate as a pack mount? That'd be pretty cool. A mount me mech. I know that there's a few mods on the uh, workshop that do, do it. In terms of hauler mechs, there are. Uh, tunnelers make for very good caravan haulers. Uh, like a buffalo. But you can't ride it. So that would be the caveat. It's not rideable, but they are very good caravan uh, robots. 
because they have a huge carry weight. Horse type mech makes me think of um, ooh, an Imperial Trader of um, Zero Dawn because you, know, you can do that. Well, the Imperial Trader has to be Brizit, so before Brizit goes into the pod, let's have him trade. Hmm. Please have something good. The jeans I didn't care for, sold. Smoke Leaf Impervious. Snoop Dogg Jean, we just bought. Cool. Some old armor that we can part with. Come on. Give me something to buy. Give me something to buy. Prestige, prestige Cataphract Helmet at normal quality? I could buy that for Wendy. I'd probably want to craft one that's higher quality, though. Uh, maybe buy a Monosword. Because we have a bunch of people wielding Warhammers, which are just not as good. Alright, that was a that was a big trade. And Scorpio, I'm gonna give you the monosword. Oh, you are also restricted? Yep. I obviously did not pay that much attention to your zoning. Your everything else was set correctly, just not your zoning. I just didn't assume that he would be zone restricted, like, at the start. God, another one. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld, the first Wendigo, which originally streamed live on Twitch, September 3rd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Wendigos.